in the previous class we discussed about the uh, different types of yield measures of the bond and uh, here the yield can be a current yield, it can be nominal yield, it can be yield to maturity, it can be yield to call, yield to put all these things. So, what we basically here uh, we have observed that the yield is nothing but the whatever return you are going to or you are expecting from that particular bond, what investment you are making on the bond, whatever return you are expecting that is basically represented as the yield. Then let us see one particular hypothetical case that uh, whenever you are holding a bond and the bond is maturity period is uh, of that particular bond is let 5 years, but the investor or the bond holder uh, needs some cash in between or he or she wants to redeem that particular bond in between. So, in that particular point of time how we can calculate the total return or the yield of that bond. So, that is basically defined as the realized yield. So, whenever we are calculating the realized yield, it what it measures? It measures basically uh, how the particular coupons are reinvested in the market and as well as how much coupon you have received and at how much price you have sold the bond in between. That means, after your horizon period, your holding period. That is why the bond yield in terms of realized yield is basically a measure of the yield obtained by assuming the cash flow are to be reinvested uh, to the investors horizon at an assumed reinvestment rate and at the horizon the bond is sold at an assumed rate given the horizon is not at maturity. That means, the horizon period is not at maturity, horizon period is below the maturity period. So, in that case how the return of that particular bond can be calculated? That means, exactly how much return you are going to realize if you are going to sell that bond or you are going to redeem that bond before the maturity. So, here if you see there are certain factors or certain determinants which determine this return from that particular bond in terms of the total return or the realized return. What are those? One is your uh, horizon value at what value basically you are selling that bond. Then the bond price at the horizon, then total monetary value or monetary return what you are getting. Then if you are getting that uh, if you are going to sell that particular bond at that particular point of time, then what is the total value of that particular bond and at what price you have purchased the bond. So, you have a end value, then you have a beginning value. or the selling value or the purchase value. So, once you have the end value and the purchase value, then what you can do? You can find out the return from that by simply whatever way the return from the zero coupon bond we were calculating. So, let us see that how that particular mechanism works. Suppose one investor buys a 4 year 10 percent coupon bond paying the coupon annually and selling at its par value of 1000. Assume the investor needs cash at the end of 3 years. Here you remember this uh, particular bonds uh, maturity period is 4 years, but investor needs cash at the end of year 3. So, because of that what is happening? He that means, the horizon period is 3 years. So, it is certain you are assuming that he can reinvest the coupon whatever he has received up to that particular 3 years period, because he was holding the bond up to 3 years and 
expects to sell the bond at the horizon at the rate of 10 percent. The yield basically was 10 percent and that yield remain constant of that particular period of time. So, then in that particular context how basically we can calculate the total return or the realized return. If you see then what basically we have to first calculate? We have to first calculate the SD value. What is the value of the bond at the horizon period? And this value is nothing but how you can calculate this value? This value is nothing but the price the investor obtains from selling the bond at the SD value and the value of the coupons at the SD. That means, if you want to calculate the value of that bond at that particular point of time, then what is the cash flow we are going to get? We are going, going to get the cash flow that is 100 rupees because 10 percent is the coupon and we have the uh, value of the bond what basically at price we are selling this bond. These are the two cash flows which are involved in this. Then let us see how that particular thing works. Then in this case if you observe the investor can sell the bond only the bond maturity period is 4 years already 3 years are gone only 1 year is left out. Then how much coupon he will be getting? He will be getting a coupon of 100 dollar. So, he will be getting a coupon of 100 dollar and a 1000 par at the maturity. So, if you are going to calculate the price of the bond in this case because the yield and the uh, coupon rate are same then the value what you are getting that is the 1000 dollar. 100 rupees what is the coupon is remaining or future you are going to get that is the par value of the bond and one year is left out. So, if you discount it then you are getting that particular value of the bond as 1000 rupees because here the why you are getting exactly 1000 because the reason is the coupon rate and the yield rate are same. The 10 percent is the coupon and 10 percent is the yield. And now what is happening how basically you can calculate because you are holding the bond up to 3 years. If you are holding the bond up to 3 years you got 1000 rupees whenever you have sold that bond then how much total value you got because 100 rupees you got in the after the first year which is the coupon. If this 100 rupees you got and this market interest rate or yield is 10 percent then what you have done you have invested that particular 100 rupees in the market right for another 2 years you might have invested then you got 100 into 1.1 to the power 2 that is 121 rupees. Whatever 100 rupees you have got in the first year after first year you have invested it for another 2 years you got 121 dollar. Then in the end of the second year you got another 100. So, that 100 you can invest it for another 1 year then what how much you got 100 into 1.1 that basically will give you 110. So, whatever 100 rupees you have got after the first year from there you got 121 and whatever 100 you have got after second year you got 110. Then what is the total you got? Then in its third coupon third up to third year you are, in, you are spent uh, investing that particular bond you are holding that bond. So, in the end of the third year also you will be getting 100 rupees, but you did not have time to invest it you have got 100, 100 dollar you got, but that money is not reinvested in the market. Then effectively how much you got? Effectively you have got 121 plus 110 plus 100, then total you got 331, you got 331 and you have sold the bond the horizon investors has sold that bond at a price of 1000 rupees or 1000 dollar then total he has got the investor would have 1331 in the cash at the SD. So, the SD value has become 1331. 
So, the coupon is reinvested and the whatever coupon in the end of the period he got. So, if you add up everything 1000 plus 331 it will give you 1331. Now, so here what is basically happening that the horizon value of 1331 here basically 1331, 331 consists of the bond value of 1000, coupon is 300 and the reinvestment what you got that is 31 because the coupons are again reinvested in the market you got the reinvestment amount 31. So, total value you got 1331 and now you can calculate the total return from this then how you can calculate. So, now if you see the total return is calculated in this way. So, you have this is the formula for uh, calculation of this the coupon value uh, at S d is c into 1 plus r to the power t t is equal to 0 to S d minus 1 because uh, last year you cannot reinvest that money. Uh, then finally, it is nothing but c into the future value of interest factor then total value the coupon value at S d you can calculate any of the weight c into 1 plus r to the power S d minus 1 divided by r any of the formula you can use to find out the coupon value at S d and here in this case if you put your coupon was c which is 100 dollar uh, your rate yield was 10 percent then 1.1 you are holding it for 3 years up to to the power 3 minus 1 divided by 0 0.1 which is the r 10 percent then we are exactly getting 331 that is what we have explained it. So, 331 rupees we got it. So, now the total value you got that is basically your how much 1331 then how is the what is the return if you see the return now your SD value is 1331 if you see here and what is the price that is 1000 dollar then 1000 how much year you are for how many years you are holding it 1.3 then 1 1.2 the power 1.3 minus 1 that is basically you are getting 10 percent return. So, here we are getting 10 percent return the reason is everything remains same your coupon and yield are same, but it can also vary depending upon the change in the yield rate in the market a change in the interest rate in the market. So, this concept is basically called the total return or the realized return that actually you can keep in the mind. That means, the bond the investor have uh, has not hold the bond up to the maturity, but then how much return he can expect from this. Then we can uh, discuss some concepts related to the uh, bond market or the bond instrument which are used for the bond investment strategy which is not a part of this particular uh, subject syllabus, but still you can have the idea that uh, those kind of things are used extensively for minimization of the risk in the bond market. So, that one of the concept is duration. So, what do you mean by the duration? The duration is basically what? It is a weighted average of the bonds time period and the weights are basically given on the basis of the present value of the cash flows or it is a weighted average on a present value basis of the time to full recovery of the principal and interest payments on a bond and it measures the weighted average maturity of a bond's cash flow on a present value whatever way you can define it. It is basically a measure of the time, but it is a weighted value and the weights are given on the basis of the present value of the cash flows. So, if you see this the weights are given on the you are calculating the present value of the cash flows and here t is equal to the time. So, we are multiplying t with respect to that uh, weights and finally, this uh, duration is calculated. So, let us see one example that how the duration is calculated. Let there is a bond which maturity period is 4 years, 4 years is the maturity period, coupon is 9 percent, par value is 1000, yield curve is 10 percent means the yield is 10 percent. So, if you see 
that first year how much cash flow you are getting 90 rupees, second year 90 rupees, third year 90 rupees and in the fourth year the power value is 1000 plus 90 1090. Then you find out the present value of this, the present value of this 90 divided by 1.1 you got is 81.18, 90 divided by 1.1 1 square you got this 1.1 to the power 3 you got this then 1090 divided by 1.1 to the power 4 you got this. Then the total present value of the bond is 1968.3. Then you are finding out the weights. So, this divided by total will give you this, this divided by give uh, this divided uh, the total will give, will give you this, this divided by this will give you this, this divided by this will give you this. Now, what you can do this one you can multiply with the time period. So, these are the weights now you got it. So, now 1 multiplied by this plus 2 multiplied by this plus 3 multiplied by this plus 4 multiplied by this that will give you 3.52. So, for a 4 years maturity period term to maturity bond the duration is 3.52 and the use of the duration is basically to minimize the interest rate risk in the market or you should hold a bond up to the uh, where the your horizon period is matching with the duration not with the term to maturity. That is the investment strategy always we adopt. If your horizon period is 3.5 years do not invest in a bond whose term to maturity is 3.5 years you invest in a bond whose duration is 3.5 years. By that your interest rate risk in the market can be minimized. So, that is the use of the duration concept. So, now uh, if you are calculating the duration of a portfolio remember the duration of a portfolio is simply the weighted average of each of the bonds duration with the weights giving the proportion investment for funds allocated to each bond. If you have 100 rupees you have spent uh, is uh, allocated 5, 5, 5 rupees for one bond 20 rupees for another bond accordingly you can find out the weights and each bond you can find out the duration if you multiply that then that will give you the duration of the portfolio. Duration also is used as a price sensitivity measure. Okay. So, that is why it is an important measure of the bond price volatility. Duration also can be used as a measure of the price volatility of the bond. So, that is why if you are defining in that way duration is defined as the percentage change in the bond price given a change in the yield, given a small change in the yield. Mathematically, if you want to find out the duration, it is nothing but the first order derivative of the equation of the price of a bond with respect to the yield, then dividing by the bond's price and expressing the result in the equation in the absolute value. So, how it is basically represented? It is represented in this way. Duration is equal to already I told you d p by d y divided by p. So, then if you are going to find out the uh, from the present value formula p is equal to you know uh, what is that uh, value of the p the present value formula. Then if you find out the uh, the uh, derivatives of that then you can find out this one and divided by p if you take then this is the basically the duration what you can find out. But one thing you remember whenever in the beginning of the example we are talking about the duration that is basically this uh, this bracketed expression if you see this one what it basically talks about it is the weighted average of the time period defined in the last section of the duration what we have defined. Now, we are getting another term that is 1 by 1 plus y whenever we have gone for the uh, using the derivatives concept. So, that part is basically called the Maclean's duration and the overall term whenever you are dividing 1 plus y with to, to that it is called the modified duration. The, modi the Maclean duration divided by 1 plus y or into 1 by 1 plus y that will give you the modified duration which can be derived from the first order derivative of that particular price equation. 
with respect to a change in the yield. Then you see that if you go by this that the price of a bond which pays the coupon is its period and principal at maturity this is the basically P which is the formula that already we know. And if you take the taking order the first order derivative of the equation then your modified duration will be this one C by y square into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus y to the power n plus n into f minus C by y divided by 1 plus y to the power n plus 1 divided by P. This is the for uh, equation what you can find out whenever we go for the first order derivative of this particular equation with respect to y. Uh, so, always uh, you see the durations are measured in terms of the years uh, and this is always uh, uh, reported in terms of the annualized value. So, if the duration uh, if the cash flow is distributed annually the duration reflects in years if the cash flow is semi annually then duration reflects the half of the years. But even if you are calculating this thing half of the years of the years finally, the annualized duration has to be calculated then the annualized duration is nothing but duration for the bond with n payments per year divided by n. That is why the duration are defined in terms of the length of the period between the payments and the convention is to express the duration as the annual measure that actually you keep in the mind this is always reported in the as a part of the annual measure. So, the annualized duration is obtained by dividing duration by the number of payments per year and if it is two times it is paid then you find out that then finally, divided by 2 that will give you the annualized duration that actually we have to keep in the mind. Then we have to see that what are those properties of the duration because you see uh, the basic features of the bond is what coupon maturity uh, and yield. Then on that basis if you want to relate the duration with respect to all those bond fundamentals like coupon uh, maturity and the yield then what kind of relationship we can establish of uh, duration with respect to all the three variables. What basically we have observed or it is observed the lower the coupon rate the greater the duration. If you are taking two bonds the term to maturity is same and other uh, the par value is same everything is same, but only coupon there is a difference in terms of the coupon then what you will observe whichever bond the coupon rate is lower the duration of that particular bond will be higher the lower the coupon rate greater the duration lower the coupon rate greater the duration. Then everything remain constant everything remains same if you see longer the term to maturity greater the duration longer the term to maturity greater the duration. And for a zero coupon bond where there is no such kind of coupon which has periodically uh, available the macular duration is equal to bonds term to maturity that means the term to maturity is equal to duration the term to maturity is equal to duration anyway in between there is no cash flow involved in that. So, because of that obviously in the end we are getting the cash flow because there is a zero coupon bond in that context what we can observe that it is equal to the uh, duration is equal to term to maturity and the modified duration is equal to n by 1 plus y y is basically the yield the modified duration is uh, whatever is the duration you are getting uh, divided by 1 plus y a duration is nothing but the term to maturity then let yield is let 5 percent or 3 percent. So, if you cal divide that with respect to uh, that particular maturity period then you can find out the modified duration. Then another observation also we can find the higher the yield to maturity lower, lower the duration everything remain constant everything remain same if you compare between the two different bonds whichever bonds maturity period the higher yield to maturity is there or the yield is more and for that particular type of bond the duration will be lower that also has been observed. So, these are the different properties of the duration. 
Then another uh, concept which is also important uh, from the bond investment point of view that is called the convexity. Why the convexity comes? Because if you remember whenever we are having a relationship with a price and yield, what we have seen? Price and yield curve is basically a convex curve, it is convex to the origin. So, it is board shaped. So, if it is there, so there is some kind of arc which is involved in that the curvature. So, convexity is basically nothing but it measures the curvature. The convexity is basically measures the how the board shape the price yield curve is or the what is the curvature of that price yield curve that is basically measured by the convexity. So, what it then exactly in the mathematical sense it measures? It basically nothing but the change in the slope of the price yield curve. The slope of the price yield curve basically is nothing but the duration and if you are going for change in the slope of the price yield curve, then we are going for the second order derivative of that particular equation, then we can find out the convexity. So, duration can be calculated by taking the first order derivative of the price equation with respect to change in the yield and the convexity can be measured by taking the second order derivative of the price equation whenever there is a change in the yield. That is the basic difference between convexity and the duration. Then uh, if you see that uh, how the convexity can be measured. So, already I told you the convexity means that the slope of the price yield curve like delta d p by d y gets smaller as you move down the curve or as the y t m increases. So, mathematically convexity is the change in the slope of the price yield curve for a small change in the yield and it is the second order derivative. So, if you trying to find out the second order derivative then you can find this 1 by p 0 b summation t is equal to 1 to n t into t plus 1 c f divided by 1 plus y to the power t plus 2. So, that is basically convexity. If you are talking about a bond of a fixed coupon each period and the principal at maturity is also fixed, then what you can do? You can find out the convexity formula will be this way because if you go for the secondary derivative of that equation, then you can find out these values. 2 c by y q into 1 minus 1 by y 1 plus y to the power n minus 2 c n, c means it is the coupon, n means the time, I mean what is the period divided by y square into 1 plus y uh, to the power n plus 1 into n into n plus 1 into f minus c by y divided by 1 plus y to the power n plus 2 divided by the price. So, that is the formula for the convexity of a coupon uh, of a bond which pays the fixed coupon periodical basis. So, that actually we can use it whenever uh, we go for calculating the convexity of a particular bond. So, like duration convexity reflects the length of period between two cash flows and the annualized convexity is found by dividing the convexity measured in terms of n payments per year by n square. There we are dividing with n, here we are dividing with n square because we are talking about the second order part. So, the annualized convexity is convexity for bonds with n payments per year 2 times 3 times uh, whatever uh, frequency the coupon payments has divided by the n square. That is the way the annualized convexity can be calculated. See this example of a 10 years bond of 9 percent coupon with semi annual payment with a bond value 100, then obviously 9 rupees is the coupon, semi annual means 4.5, then 2 c you have taken 2 c divided by y q, 2 c 2 into 4.5 y is equal to 4.0.045, it is 4.5 rupees, it is 4.5 percent into 1 minus 1 by 1.045 to the power what to the power n, n means it is the 10 years bond and semi annual coupon then obviously to the power 20 minus 2 c n period is 20 4.5 into 20 divided by 
this is your interest rate 0 0.4045 square into 1.045 to the power 21 because it is basically n plus 1. Uh, then plus your 20 into 21 into 100 minus 4.5 the formula you can put it then find out that particular value that is 225.43. And now the period is n is equal to 2 that how many times the coupon is paid that is basically 2 times then your annualized convexity is 225.43 divided by square of the 2 that is 4 you can get 56.36 for this particular bond the convexity is 56.36. Then what is the properties of convexity as the yield increases the convexity of the bond decreases. For a given yield and maturity the lower the coupon the greater the convexity it is uh, same thing with duration also for a given yield and modified duration the lower the coupon the smaller is the convexity. So, that is what uh, what basically uh, we can uh, always find out in terms of the properties of the convexity. Please go through this particular uh, references uh, for this particular session. Thank you.